In the late 1700s, a giant skull lined with sharp teeth was discovered in a quarry in the Netherlands. It was around 2 meters long, being comparable in size to a fully grown man, and almost three times as long as the skull of a saltwater crocodile. At this time, dinosaurs hadn't been discovered, or at least they weren't known to science yet, and so for the people at the time, a skull from a giant predatory animal was awe-inspiring, a true sea monster. Since the skull was discovered near the Meuse River in Holland, it was named Mosasaurus. By the end of the Cretaceous, about 70 to 80 million years ago, they had taken over the oceans, and had been found from the UK to Antarctica. And although a body of Mosasaurus wouldn't be found for some time after the discovery in Holland, an enormous lower jawbone of a specimen discovered in Russia, scaled up, shows these creatures would have been at least larger than two great whites, and may have grown even larger than this. The Mosasaur skull eventually found its way to the French Natural History Museum, as the skull was actually looted during a battle in the French Revolutionary Wars. Once it was in the Natural History Museum, the skull was then studied by the famous paleontologist Georges Cuvier. The Mosasaur skull was discovered at a very pivotal moment when science as we know it today was still in its infancy, and new ideas like deep time were only just starting to be explored. For instance, at the time, it was still widely believed that no species of animal had ever become extinct. Georges Cuvier theorised that the fossils of mammoths and other prehistoric creatures that were being discovered weren't the skeletons of modern animals like elephants, and were actually a different species that had gone extinct a long time ago. And this new giant skull, belonging to a sea monster that went extinct a very long time ago, strengthened this new theory of extinction. He also worked out the creature's true identity. Upon its discovery, it was thought that the Mosasaur skull may have been a giant crocodile, and then later that it belonged to some sort of toothed whale, but Mosasaurs were actually giant lizards. The marine reptiles that lived at the same time as the dinosaurs descended from a few different animals. For instance, plesiosaurs were related to turtles, and ichthyosaurs weren't closely related to any modern reptiles, evolving from a more ancient species and about 100 million years ago, the last group of giant marine reptiles to adapt to life in the ocean were mosasaurs, descending from a lizard that returned to the water to adapt to a marine lifestyle. The lizards that mosasaurs were most closely related to is still debated. Georges Cuvier thought that the mosasaurs were closely related to monitor lizards, with many scientists still believing this to be the case to this day. However, some researchers believe that mosasaurs were actually more closely related to snakes, one theory about how snakes evolved was that they lost their limbs to adapt to the ocean and become better swimmers, and it is thought that mosasaurs may have been descendants of the lizards that would eventually go on to give rise to the snakes. Instead of losing their limbs altogether, they developed fins instead. This would explain their incredibly long bodies, but actually the more important comparison was with their skulls, as mosasaurs had flexible skulls and double hinged jaws much like those of snakes. However, monitor lizards and snakes are actually very closely related, which is probably why it has been difficult to work out where mosasaurs came from. The earliest possible mosasaur ancestor, known in the fossil record, was a semi-aquatic lizard called a Gylosaurus that is known from Croatia about 99 million years ago during the mid-Cretaceous period. At this time, Europe was a set of tropical islands, and a Gylosaurus would have lived in shallow marine habitats hunting for small prey. Its skull was very similar in structure to mosasaurs, which is why it is thought that they may have been their ancestors. However, its body was very similar to terrestrial lizards, not too different to monitor lizards. It didn't have flippers and instead had small claws attached to long limbs, so it wouldn't have been permanently tied to the water, and would have almost certainly come back onto land. The first undisputed mosasaur known in the fossil record was called Dallasaurus, that lived in what is modern day Texas about 92 million years ago. Dallasaurus was only about a metre long, so by today's standards, they would have been large reptiles. However, compared with most mosasaurs, they were tiny. Like a Gylosaurus, they were also probably semi-aquatic, as they still had functional limbs, and so most likely stuck to hunting in the shallow coastal water as well. The reason these lizards managed to cross the Atlantic Ocean is because at this point in time, it was much smaller, and the island chain that was Europe at this time backed straight onto North America, so there would have been plenty of shallow coastline for these small lizards to colonise. For a long time, it was thought that mosasaurs never became good swimmers, 
or at least not as good as the many other marine reptiles that lived before them. Due to them being lizards, it was thought that their tail tapered to a point, and so they may have swam like marine iguanas, or crocodiles, which oscillate their bodies side to side like an eel. However, the fossil of a mosasaur called Platycarpus has an imprint of a small tail fluke that pointed upwards while the end of their tail jutted down, so that it would have looked like an upside down shark tail, and now evidence of tail flukes have been found on other mosasaur fossils, meaning they must have been common among the family, and that mosasaurs were in fact really well adapted to swimming. When mosasaurs evolved a tail fin and paddled like limbs to become better swimmers, they also became some of the most dominant animals in the ocean. When they first evolved, they weren't the most successful or dominant animals, and weren't very diverse either, with them primarily sticking to the shallows. But in a very short window of time, around 90 million years ago, they mushroomed into a collection of different body shapes and forms, sometimes with several different mosasaurs filling different niches in the same ecosystem. There were of course the giant whale-sized kind of mosasaur, like the larger species of Mosasaurus and Tylosaurus that were apex predators that would have eaten the many large marine animals that they shared the ocean with at this time. However, evidence indicates a particularly strong predator-prey relationship with the giant car-sized turtles that lived during the Cretaceous, with many bite marks and even broken Mosasaur teeth being found on the fossilized shells of giant turtles. But some Mosasaurs may have been under the threat of being eaten by other large predators from the time period. Numerous fossils of mosasaurs have bite marks and wounds inflicted on them that may have been created by other mosasaurs, either from territorial disputes or larger species of mosasaurs hunting smaller species. But there are some mosasaur fossils that have bite marks with tooth grooves too closely spaced together to have been made by another mosasaur, and actually have the classic curvature of a shark jaw. Many of these bite marks may have been made from sharks feeding on the carcass of dead mosasaurs. However, one specimen of a piece of mosasaur tail vertebrae that has a large bite mark on it, most likely made by a shark, has evidence that the wound got infected after the attack, meaning the mosasaur must have survived, possibly showing that at least in some cases sharks actively hunted mosasaurs. Despite the large marine reptiles that lived around this time, the sharks were still big players during the Cretaceous. There was even one giant shark from the time named the Ginzu shark, that was slightly larger than a great white, and may have been responsible for the bite marks made on the mosasaur fossils. Mosasaurs were all carnivorous, but were still very diverse, evolving to fill many niches. For instance, there is a mosasaur that fossils have been found in Japan and Belgium, called Phosphorosaurus, that had incredibly large eyes, much larger than any other mosasaur. This was because they would have evolved to live and hunt in low light conditions. It's possible that they were nocturnal mosasaurs, However, they could have also been deep sea divers. Like some species of whales, they may have hunted deep sea animals that dwell deeper than light can penetrate, and so needed to adapt good night vision. The fossils of another mosasaur weren't even found in the ocean. It was named Pannoniosaurus, and it was discovered in a freshwater ecosystem, most likely a river that ran through what is modern day Hungary. It was about as big as a large saltwater crocodile, and may have competed with crocodiles from the time, one mosasaur named Globodons actually evolved to serve an ecological niche unlike any living marine animal. It actually evolved to lose its sharp predatory teeth and instead had teeth that were blunt and rounded. In addition to its teeth, it also had a very stout and powerful skull which has led researchers to believe that it may have specialised to crush the shells of ammonites. During the Cretaceous, the oceans were filled with clusters of ammonites bobbing up and down not too far from the surface and some of them could grow to the size of a small car, and so it only makes sense that there would have been predators from the time that would have adapted to take advantage of this resource, and learn how to break into their shells. The explosion of mosasaur species was actually sheer luck. During the mid-Cretaceous, there was an extinction event that caused a lot of the older marine reptiles like ichthyosaurs and the marine crocodiles, known as the Thalatosuchians, to go extinct. And although some plesiosaurs, like the relatively small polycotylid, survived right up until the end of the Cretaceous, they were far less common than they were in the Jurassic period. The details of why these grand reptiles disappeared is not fully understood, but it is known that in the mid-Cretaceous, global temperatures reached some of the highest in the Earth's history. This probably wasn't the reason why the marine reptiles went extinct around this time, but the knock-on effects from higher temperatures like higher sea levels can cause problems for food availability and navigating migration routes, which could have caused havoc for the marine reptiles. So the mighty mosasaurs most likely became so successful 
because they were able to fill the empty niches left over by the other marine reptiles. So although the mosasaurs may have been one of the first prehistoric animals and the first marine reptile to ever be discovered, in real life they were actually the final chapter of the grand marine reptiles, and were actually the last to rule the seas. Thank you for watching. A big thank you goes to all my patrons, especially the big contributors that are listed here. If you like content like this, then consider becoming a patron as well.